Yo, yo, yo. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another awesome edition of the Best Practice Show podcast. I am so pumped you're here. Today I interview for the first time Dr. Gina Dorfman. Now, if you don't know who she is, you need to learn about who she is. She is an awesome entrepreneur. She built an amazing dental practice, and then she just decided to start a software company, and it did really well. It's called Yappy. So my question was, how the heck do you do this? And her answer, very revealing. And she said, it's okay not to be okay all the time. And I hope you enjoy this very transparent conversation. So we'll see you soon. Hey guys, welcome back to the Best Practices Show podcast, and I got a special edition for you today. I have a new friend, Dr. Gina Dorfman, and we're kind of in the same boat today. It's like how, actually, she gets way more done than I do, uh, and I'm not getting anything done today, and we're going to be talking about this whole work-life balance when it just doesn't really balance out very well sometimes, and so Gina, thanks for being on. I really appreciate it. Thank you. So I actually told my marketing manager he needs to make sure that I show up for the show and I pick up my dog from the rumors <laughs> because I'm having one of those days. And thank you for having me in the show. And I thought you would never ask. Hey, I knew I was going to get you on here. Okay, so now you got to go back to the group. The whole point of this show is like, you're a very successful human being, like incredible. We're going to, I want to get, I, you're going to help me today and hopefully listeners today, but like go back to the dog story. Now I was fascinated. Your dog's name is Flash. Now that's, that's really interesting. So tell everybody what you did this morning and uh, how your day is going so far. <laughs> Okay, so my day is amazing because you're part of this, just <laughs> okay. so you know. There you but, go. okay, it didn't start out very well because I woke up at six and then I had, oh my God, I have to drop my, my daughter at school. And oh my God, can I tell you a failure story? Please. I'm a horrible mother. You I are not. You are not. Mother, no, 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 I am. So for years, my, my son's been going to Buckley, which is like, just to give you the idea, that's where Kardashians graduated, okay? So that's, you know, kind of give you a little scenario of the, of the, of the school. Um, and I volunteered in the Buckley Fair. And this year, after two years of not having a Buckley Fair, uh, we, we're having a fair today. And it crept up on me and I was traveling and doing lectures and other things and working and and today my daughter says do you have my ticket and I'm like oh shit I never had to worry about this because I always volunteer at the fair right like I am always one of the people now I'm normally being paid a lot more but I'm I'm like opening gates for people and checking their tickets at the fair and I'm not, I don't have a ticket for her. And she's the new student coming into the school. So I'm, I'm, I'm texting with my son, like, honey, like you're an honor student. You're amazing. Like, can you please get your sister into the fair? And he's like, they're sold out. So I'm calling the Dean with a, Oh my God, I, I'm a horrible mother because my daughter is going to transfer to your school you know, next year. And I forgot to get her tickets. Oh my God. And the thing is like, my son never even cared about that stuff, but she wants to go and I will have a ticket for her. And he doesn't have a ticket because he, he doesn't care about that stuff. Even though I was always there volunteering, bringing him all the stuff that I donated and bought at the fair. <laughs> this is awesome. 
All right. So now I feel actually pretty normal because I make big mistakes like that too. And it's, it's, we're just, there are days where I'm saying, I just got to get through today. And so I want people, let's start here first because we're going to talk about how imperfect life is. I want people to know your story. Like, who are you? Who is Dr. Gina Dorfman? So give us the bio. I will start by saying that people always ask me one question. How do you get all of this done? And the secret is I don't do anything. I just have people around me who are absolutely amazing and uh, they, they raise me. Is that, is that a thing? So, okay. So in like, I'm Jewish and in, in our religion, we have this thing where we like raise someone in the chair. That's my team. They're raising me. They're celebrating me. I'm nobody without the people around me. And and I sincerely mean it. Um, yesterday, no, not yesterday, Tuesday, I went from a board meeting at Yappy, which is the software company that I founded, to a 20-year celebration at my dental practice. Wow. And it was just the most amazing thing. Okay, so this practice was there for 20 years. We started it from scratch. It was nothing. It was absolutely nothing. And my husband and I, my husband is not a dentist. He went to law school. Um, the last year of the law school, he said, you know, there's one thing I'm not going to do in my life is I'm not going to practice law because I fucking hate it. Can I say that? Can you leave <laughs> You can I know. say whatever you want. This is a privately <laughs> held show, you know? Okay. Sorry. I, sometimes I'm a little, you know, outspoken. Um, he said, I'm not doing this law thing because it's boring because it doesn't make sense. I don't love it let's start a practice together. So we started a dental practice and then we started a dental software company. No, then we started another dental practice. Then we were going to start another dental practice because we were building a DSO back in the day before it was a popular thing to do. And then um, we decided, no, no, software is where we're going to be. Uh, anywho, um, I told you I was unfiltered, right? <laughs> right. And I love this. <laughs> Now, what's really cool is like I have a hard enough time running one company. You like created this other company, and it's not just a small. I mean, Yappy's pretty amazing company. I want to know like how did you even get motivated? To, like, what was the what was the what was the catalyst for that? What was the idea, and what did you do? And then I found someone as crazy as me, <laughs> Dr. Howard Foran. Now, I literally called Howard and I said, "Can I have an hour of your time?" an hour. I'm going to fly to Arizona and I just want to explain the concept and talk to you and get your idea on whether this is worth pursuing. So we flew to um, Arizona and Howard brought six people from uh, today's dental, which is his dental office, and six people from um, a dental town. And for four hours, Howard talked about things that had nothing to do with software. Most of these things didn't even have to do anything with dentistry. He was talking about why weed is better than alcohol with, as far as drugs go. And you met Howard. I know you met Howard. I know you know what I'm talking about. His crazy is higher than my crazy, but that's why we get along. And before, four hours later, he catered lunch. Four hours later, I asked for one hour. Four hours later, he leaves the room and he says, Gina, you'd be nuts not to do it. I, I was like, oh my God, I have to pick up Zach and you'd be nuts not to do it. Like yeah. that's so as far as decision making process. I can give you another example of decision making process with Howard. Um, for years, I've heard Howard say, ortho is like, glue and rubber bands you probably heard him say that too right right okay hundred hundred cases later i'm like okay it's not <laughs> like i don't like doing this and it's not just glue and rubber bands and i've learned a lot about occlusion but i could have done it in a course course so um i'm done <laughs> um but in this case it worked out Oh, I can't hear you. 
We lost. Oh, shoot. I lost you there for a second. So you met with Howard, and then Howard gave you this idea, or you gave Howard the idea, and then what we happened from there? Software. We built a software for the DSO that we were building. And then all of a sudden, we're like, wait a second. The software is more amazing. Like, this world doesn't need another DSO. Can I say that on the show? Yeah, you can say whatever you want. There's no there's no advertisers here. There's no governing board. We we're just I like the fact that you're unfiltered. So so um we were gonna build a DSO and then we realized this world doesn't need a DSO. This world needs better software. Mm -hmm. And that's what we did. <laughs> yeah, that is awesome. And we're doing it again because our software is 10 years old. And we're rebuilding it. That's crazy. Well, I mean, you're creating something special, but I want you to, like, how in the world did you keep two businesses together and continue to do this? I also want you to describe the whole thing when you say people ask you, how do you get so much done? And you say you don't do anything. Now, like, that's easy to say, but like, I want you to dissect that for me. Like, help me understand how that works. Okay. So first, it starts with vision. If we want our people to come to work and build what we want them to build, our vision needs to trickle down to them, right? Right. And we're doing a very, very bad job at doing this as a profession, as dentists, because we talk to our patients and, you know, I mean, I, I get it. Like throughout the day, we hear things like, um, Doc, this tooth didn't hurt until you touched it, right? right? And nothing personal, but I don't like the dentist. And so what we do is we hide. Like we hide in our offices. And if you ask Josh, he'll tell you, sometimes we just throw the phone at the wall and we break a wall, right? <laughs> I've seen that. He actually yes. put a hole in the wall, I think. With he one actually of those. did. And he has yeah. an amazing course. And I know he was a guest on your recent podcast because I listen to your podcast. I'm a listener. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a listener who was wondering what took you so long <laughs> to, to reach out to you. <laughs> yes, but but now I I'm, now that I'm hearing myself, I understand. <laughs> yeah. Well, you and I, I don't think we've ever met in person. No, I, think... I was trying. I was really trying to talk to you at the last ADA. Okay but you were really busy on your cell phone and I circled and I circled and I circled and then I felt like a stalker. So I just. <laughs> <laughs> well, be ready to be underwhelmed here. So I was probably calling home yelling at one of my kids. So uh, speaking of yelling at your kids. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I think the point is, is that we need to, we need to um, share the vision of what it is that we're trying to build. And can I share a story? Not please, my story. Please. Okay. So um, this dentist, who I think is brilliant and amazing and smart and funny and um, probably has a really great team, because I can't see it otherwise, said to himself once, um, if I use this post and it's the last post next time i have a patient in my chair who is needing the same post i'm not going to have the post unless i order it myself because we tell the story to ourselves that um unless we do it ourselves nobody is going to do it better than us yeah. and even if they could by the time i teach them how to do it. And by the time we get all the, you know, quirks solved, it's better and faster to do it ourselves. And that's a bad story, right? That's a bad story. And that's the story that he told himself. He said, I am not going to have a post next time I'm going to need this post unless I order it myself. So guess what he did? He went to his office, he ordered the post. Now, those are stories that when you tell yourself them so many times, you believe them. You believe them. Mm -hmm. And 
you believe them so much that you keep telling those stories to yourself and, and your team starts to believe those stories because they see that you have no confidence in them, right? Yeah. So he ordered the post and the post came in, in a box that was placed with his mail on his desk because he thinks that he should open all of his mail. <laughs> right? Right, right, right. Okay, so he opens the box, he takes out the post, and he brings the post to his lead assistants, and he tells the assistant exactly where the post should go. And guess what happens next time the patient is in the office and needs a post? What? You want to guess? I want to guess, or I'm hoping that he doesn't have to do this anymore. Does it have a different turn than that or no? Okay. So the post is nowhere to be found. Oh, no. And it's like a week later. It's not like a year later, right? It's like a week later. The post is nowhere to be found. So he goes to his office manager, and he told the story in the podcast, and I have his approval to share that story, he goes up to his office manager and he says, if I can't trust my team to put the post that I order it myself into the box where I told them to put it or drawer or whatever, then I might as well swallow, drive off to the woods and swallow a bullet. Mm. It's not a good story. No, it's, it's actually funny because the office manager calls his wife and his wife had to, you know, make sure he doesn't drive off into the woods and swallow a bullet. I, I mean, I think it's ironic because he just totally set himself up. Mm -hmm. well, and go ahead. No, I want to know. I want to know where you're going with this because I'm, I'm very So intrigued. where I'm going with that is that you have to delegate and you have to trust your team to get the job done. Right. Howard Ferran says that you have to delegate authority. And to, in my office, we call it a $200 decision. So in my office, every team member has the right to make a decision. And if I lose $200 because of that decision, it's going to be just fine. Okay. The worst thing that can happen is they come to me asking questions all the time because then I can never leave the office. How can I go to Maui for 30 days? How can I run a software company if my team cannot make decisions without me being there, if I have to order my own posts? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I am, I'm telling, I'm sharing this story because I think this person is amazing and he would have better office if he trusted his team to do their job and delegated authority. Yeah. And I think this is what a lot of us are struggling with. Okay, for the most part, we're struggling to even hiring people right now, mm -hmm. but I think um, the fact that we are afraid to delegate and we're doing a lot of jobs that are beyond our pay grade I think that's a problem for us. Yeah, it's a huge so, problem. You know, and I'm a reg I mean, I would tell you this in theory is one of the most important things ever and I had to learn 10,000 times the wrong way and then it kept coming back. There was one person in the story that kept screwing it up. It was me. And I thought I was clear. I thought I was, you know, and I wasn't. There were often times where I was giving a task to somebody who didn't have like the capabilities or skills to do it in some cases too. And I think it really requires a lot of self-awareness. It requires a coach. It requires somebody to see this situation clearly because when you start to get to a point where you can do this and it starts to work, it changes everybody's life. And if you're young, I don't know, I don't know that I would have understood this at 27 really well. Do you know what I mean? I, I, am, to, I had to screw uh, it up a lot. My birthday is next week and I have screwed up so many things. <laughs> and the reason I know the right things to do is because I've made all the mistakes. And I think we need to admit that. But For you sure. said two things. 
that I want to call attention to. You said two very important thing, okay. things. One is you have to have the right person with the right training. Right. And I see it all the time. It's like, oh, well, if the hygienist has the downtime, she should call the recall. Uh-uh, no, no. Not unless she has the right verbal skills. Right. Did you send this for, and I'm just going to say names of the people that I worked with. I'm sure there are others, but every single person in my office who gets to go near, what, okay, let me ask you a question. What is the most important instrument in our practices? And uh, newsflash, as much as I love Yappy, it's not the most important. There's something that comes before that. A telephone. Telephone. Mm-hmm. And how many people get to answer a phone in a dental practice before they get trained on doing that? That's a tough question because I have a special place in my heart for the admin team members who are often the most neglected in dentistry. They don't get any training. They just get thrown into the fire. Yeah, because they're expected to learn by osmosis. For sure. Like, okay, sit next to Susie (laughs) and that's how you're going to learn to do things. And Susie has been doing this for a long time, never had any training, and she's doing the same thing that she's always done before, and it's not necessarily the the best thing. And I know, because we actually, so our software makes a lot of things easy, but what we find is that doctors don't train their team to use the software, and at some point it's like, nothing works. No, it, it actually does, but your team is not using it right, and we are happy to help. We're here for you. We want to help, but you need to designate time for this, and I cannot tell you how many times we've trained an entire team on how to use a software that is designed for the whole team to use while they're still checking patients and doing things, and I get it. Production is important. But it's also important to delegate time to non-production, to training your team, to getting better, to be like, I am looking at all of the books behind you. And the reason why you are where you are, because you've educated yourself, because you're amazing, because you're smart, because of all of the ideas that you have in your head. And we don't take the time to do this for our team, right? Well, I totally agree. And I haven't read all these books, but I feel smarter being in here. And I also. (laughs) (laughs) No, you read those books because because it's it's not one of those Zoom. (laughs) No, no, no. It's not a Zoom background. But I, you know, your point is absolutely true. I would argue, you know, I would say just to support what you just said is if you're a dentist and you work 32 clinical hours, the two most important hours are Tuesday morning when you've actually landed the plane and you're communicating with your team and proactively fixing problems that are, aren't going to happen just yet. So typically in a week, I'm just curious how many, I mean, how much time do you spend team, you know, developing team and training team? Because it is very important. So I spent the first seven years in my practice writing SOPs and I have four uh, books that are four inches thick, each one of them. So that's like six six inch, 16, easy for me to say, 16 inches of materials that actually tell my team how we're going to do things. And every person who gets on boarded is uh, reading those books, and they go through Sandy Purdue training at the uh, classic practice mm-hmm. resources, and they get scheduling institute. Again, I'm not saying that this is like there are not other resources, but this is what my team does. Yeah. So we answer if the phone is not answered in um, after three rings, we have a problem that we right. need to address. But it's also very important, and this is something that you also alluded to earlier, is that, one, we need to communicate our vision, which we don't. We don't. We bring in um, Ashley, and we hope that Ashley is going to learn from Susie, and we don't even know why Susie is doing things a certain way. Um, So this is why having systems outlined is very important, but it's also important that we train them and 
every person in my let me um i should mm, i almost almost lie almost lied i want to lie on a uh, on a show um, i'm glad it's not live so we can we don't have to edit it i'm i'm <laughs> I am okay with not being okay. You know? Oh, for sure. For sure. <laughs> so in the last two years, we haven't done the same things that we've always done. Mm -hmm. And in fact, we had something really amazing on, on Tuesday that I started to tell you before we started the show. Um, we had our team, we, we had a, um, a taco track uh, come to 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 our place and it's funny because my husband was trying to like can we have a lobster truck like can we like spice it up and everyone said no we just want tacos which i totally understand because there's nothing i would do for a klondike bar but trust me right. tacos like <laughs> this is, you can talk me into things now for sure <laughs> so we had a taco truck and we had some of the patients come to us uh, we, we invited them and they came that have been with us for 20 years. So it was our 20 year anniversary and we had patients that have been with us for 20 years and we had employees that have been with us for 20 years. And you stand there and you say, okay, you're doing something right. right. Like when you have 20 years of people liking you, you're doing something right. I have seven associates and all of them have been referred to me by previous associates. Yeah. That's like you're doing something right. And the thing is you train people, you share your vision, and you trust them to do their job. You also take good care of them and you authentically well, love them. No one's gonna stay with you for that long if you don't truly love them. So seven associates like that, that's a secret in itself. So what else would you share with us is, is one of the key secrets for your success? Okay. So one thing that I do, and I talk about this a lot, and I think it's important. I don't, okay, I'll, I'll t can I, since I'm talking about my failures. <laughs> hey, I like, no, no, no. I think it's okay to not be okay. Like, I love that. I love the whole idea of being completely vulnerable and saying, hey, listen, my life is not perfect. There are days where you're just trying to keep things together. And then there are days where it goes amazing. And it's not always predictable. Often. I forgot to pick up my daughter from gymnastics yesterday. And she's not even good at gymnastics, so I don't know why <laughs> I would do this. <laughs> she's amazing at everything else. She's funny. She writes well. She's an amazing kid. My, you know, my kids are amazing. I don't know where they get it from, but they're amazing. But, yeah, you know, like I've my mother-in-law was like, she had to call my son. <laughs> my son brought her home because I didn't want to pick up the phone. I just forgot to pick. I I took her there and I forgot to pick her up. Um, and it happens when you try to juggle a lot of things. Um, so we had a board meeting. We had a, a party. No alcohol was involved. Like this was <laughs> right. This, this was just a mommy brain, <laughs> and it's funny because whenever I say mommy brain, all of the other mommies like all of a sudden go like, "Oh yeah, I know what that what what you're talking about." Um, what was I talking about? I well, was just, going. Oh, I was, I was gonna, asking you about one of your secrets. Like, how do you do all this? Okay, so one now, thing because you're I, well, I, you're you're a very humble person, but I know you're crazy successful. Like, what? What? Like, give us a thread of. I know sharing your vision. I know SOPs. Like, how in the world do you do what you do? Because you do it well. You treat people well. Yeah. I mean, literally, when you make the people around you realize their dreams, they come through brick walls for you. For sure. I, and there are a few people who don't like me, but I think for the most part, I've been able to just surround me with people who are, are really good people. And I think this is the secret, this is, this is the secret sauce. Just the it good is. People. Yeah. <laughs> that, because when I you wish I could give you more. <laughs> no, Don't but we be an asshole. No, like that's well, that's <laughs> that's a good rule that fits in. But like when you find the right people, it changes the whole game for you. It, it just changes it, everything. My office manager 
in my dental practice has been with me since she was 17. And I just remember her in the chair. I remember interviewing her. And she just looked like she was about to burn through this chair because she just had so much positive energy. And I didn't have a job for her. I wasn't, she was, she went through a dental assistant school. She never had another position before. And I remember looking at her thinking, I just need to hire this person and I need to figure out what I can have her do in my practice. And it was almost like making shit up at that point. But what I loved about her is that it was, she had the right attitude, Mm -hmm. you know? It, like one of the, what is the most okay look, question the <laughs> most the most successful business book of all time of all time the most talked about business book i don't know how to win friends and in how to you know dale carnegie would you be talking thinking grow rich would you be thinking seven habits would you be thinking e-myth would you be thinking traction would you be thinking i mean there's so many I know, I know. And you read them all and I can see it's all behind you. Well, I need as much help as possible. (laughs) No, From Good to Great. Oh, From Good to Great. That's an excellent book. Excellent. That's that's like a Bible of a business, right? For sure. And so E-Myth, we talk a lot about this because we're the technicians that, Mm -hmm. you know, and we have all these things, and that's why we don't delegate well, but we should delegate better because other people are capable and people want to grow. Right, right. And you talked about tractions, which is all about systems, because if you don't have systems, okay, so I had a stupid moment. I'm all over the place. I'm sorry. I, <laughs> I didn't warn you. <laughs> hey, I think it speaks to what this episode is all about. Some days you're just all over the place and it's okay <laughs> to not be okay. And I was sharing with you, I'm actually doing this episode at home. You know, my wife is taking care of her parents because we're in that stage of our lives. And so she has to leave today. And I also have a daughter home from school who is, you know, getting her wisdom teeth taken out. She's home. So I've got like dogs barking. I got to check on her. And uh, you just sometimes you just got to improvise, you know. Someone asked me, perfectly pointed out, someone yesterday asked me to talk about mental health. And I said, why am I talking mental health? That's Joshua's thing, right? Like what, like no one can do it better than him. All I can tell you is that, and and they're like, no, no, it's more like life work balance. I'm like, that doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. (laughs) That's, that's pretty much the lecture. Yeah. (laughs) Sometimes your life needs you more and sometimes your work needs you more. And sometimes when you are juggling three businesses, you, forget to pick up your school I mean you kid from like school or, or, or gymnastics and that's okay because it's okay to not be okay sometimes and it's okay to talk about not being okay I think a lot of us are trying to perfect the message and I think what's important is that when you go on Instagram what do you see perfect cases right if like everyone's dentistry is perfect my dentistry is not perfect I've done not perfect dentistry on patients who were at the party yesterday or Tuesday because they appreciated the fact that I was genuine and caring. And they understand that sometimes dentistry is not perfect. A lot of things are not perfect, but we have people that we can rely on. We have people that we can um, delegate to. We have people who are there to support us. And if we take good care of them, they will take good care of our patients. We have to share a vision and, okay, vision. So there's a book, Clockwork. My favorite, I interviewed Mike McCullovics on my podcast. Have you had him on your podcast? No, I have not. I have not. Okay, I that's the next, that, you know, okay, now that you've had me, you okay. need to have Mike McCullovics. Well, you gotta, podcast. you gotta get me hooked up then. How's that? Okay, I will connect you. I, I absolutely adore him. Um, He talks about his book, Clockwork, is the book that every business owner needs to read. I like like traction a lot, but Clockwork is just so to the point and so easy. And it's so, and did I tell you I take 30 days on Maui every year? 
No, tell me, when do you do that? Because this is a great story in itself. So Okay. So I do it in the summer. Okay. Um, and I, I have a very dumb explanation for why we do it. Why? Um, we stay, uh, we rent a timeshare that's between Fairmont and Four Seasons. I know exactly where that is, yeah. On where well, there, right? It's a nice area. Yeah, absolutely. It's a nice area. That's like that road where everyone runs. It's amazing. And it's, you know, ocean facing, not ocean front per se, but facing. And it costs the same for a month as um, a couple of weeks in Fairmont. Okay. Oh, when you're traveling with like kids, okay? Right, right. So the reason we started this is because it was like, well, you know what? We might as well. Right. Because <laughs> we're paying for a month, so we might as well stay there for a month. Yeah. And so is that like the challenge? So I hear this a lot from other dentists and entrepreneurs that they carve out two two week vacations just to prove to themselves that they can do it and the business can actually survive. And everyone says like, that's that's kind of like the cadence to get into. So this is a little bit of a challenge for you to make sure that you get away and everything would still stay together while you were gone. So while you would probably hear me on you know, when I'm speaking, I talk a lot about planning and vision and like the reality is it was like, we're going to stay there for a month. So we need to figure this out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but interesting thing is that on a flight back a few years ago, I bought the book Clockwork because I needed to read something on an airplane. Mm -hmm. And it was about like, okay, you commit yourself to a 30 day vacation and you need to build a business. You have a year to build a business that works without you. And here's the thing, you can be in the business, but how do we work? Let's think about how we work. We um, do, do dentistry and we do payroll and we strive to manage and motivate our employees and make them accountable. And we do that while we are supervising three columns of hygiene and two columns of restorative and answering all of the questions that come in because nobody is smart enough in our practice to answer questions. Like it takes a big dentist brain to answer questions. And we are, um, we're making our decisions until the decision fatigue kicks in, right? Right. We, we're not, no one else can answer questions, but guess what? When people come to you with questions, you can do what Mike Michalowicz says, People are like rivers. They flow in the right direction. And you can just answer the questions because that's easy. Yeah. Right? Right. Like rivers, we flow into like the directions that the earth allows us. And so we answer all the questions. Or we can say, what do you think? Yeah. And how many times do they answer it correctly? And with the answer it correctly, we realize that, oh, my God, we don't have to be here because... They know what they're doing. Yeah. I mean, unless we all the training was by osmosis, but this is why I was talking about the vision. The vision has to trickle down to them. They need to see what we see. And they need to have like some sort of a system in place. Right. But once yeah. you have the systems and the vision, and most importantly, okay, so I started talking, I, I love all over the place and I and I am at this point not even apologetic, <laughs> nor aware of time. Um, <laughs> so so um, I'm sorry, whoever recommends- Well, well here, let me, so we're speaking about questions. So I completely agree with you because and even in my business, I'm sure this is the same in yours. Um, there's a lot of things. I don't know how a lot of these things work. I don't know. Like, I don't know. I have people that have created these things and I've, I had to let go in order to grow in order for that to happen. So people often ask me, how does that work? I'm like, I have no idea. And that is very satisfying for me. And I can see the smile in their faces because they own it. They like the result. They know the vision of that. But let's say I'm a young dentist. So we have a lot of young dentists that listen. And um, I'm going to have you back and we'll cover other topics. But damn, I'm a young dentist. 
What advice would you give me? I'm just getting started. Like, it sounds like you figured something. What advice would you give me for a successful career? Okay. I am, I, I'm going to give that advice and I have a good advice. I actually just spoke to a bunch of new dentists at South Dakota. Don't ask how I ended up in South Dakota, but I did. Um, I even have a magnet to show. Hey, <laughs> my wife is from South Dakota, so it's a great oh, place. It's a beautiful My place. German Shepherd is from South Dakota. <laughs> it's beautiful. <laughs> and he's a, he's a normal one, not, not the crazy dog. The, the crazy one is the poodle. Uh, the poodle is from Seattle, which all lines up. Anyway, so can, can I go back to something I was talking about earlier? Please. I started to talk about, um, I think it's relevant to your question. Um, I started talking about good to great. So the most most um, famous quote from that uh, book was, get the right people on the bus, get the right people off the bus, and get everyone in the right seats. Mm -hmm. So let me give you context for this quote. The co well, not you, because I'm looking at the number of books you, you have behind you, I am sure you know the context, but for, for the listeners, because it's, is it? This is a, is it a visual medium? Because you normally podcast. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Well, we've got, no, we've no. got audio and visual. You, you, I mean, you have visual. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> anyway, so, so the con there was a, this group called Merry Pranksters in the 60s. And what they were doing, they were riding on this crazy bus that was like all different colors, dropping acid. And what they knew on that bus is that anyone who didn't belong on that bus would ruin the trip, okay. literally, right? So our offices need to be like that bus. If we have the wrong people on the bus, they would ruin our trip, and they right. do, and we have the wrong people. And I, you're talking to a person who once fired two people at the same time. Like literally, we're like all sitting together and then both got fired. And I'm not proud of this except for the team that I have because I have the right people yeah. in the right seats. And and this is also important because I, before going to dental school, I was um, I was doing billing, which I loved. Billing was like you such did? a perfect job for me. I love doing insurance billing. You don't understand the joy of taking the money from the insurance companies. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. And the narratives that I can write, because I write well, so I can write right. narratives and just like everything got evaluated, reevaluated. I, I never take no for an answer. Anywho, um, yeah, I, I also worked at the front office doing um, charts, and I spent most of my day looking for charts that were usually misfiled or like some like on the biller's desk office mm -hmm. um or the doctor's office and i was like okay well this is there, there has to be a better way M might be a possibly a reason why i started the paperless software company i don't know but <laughs> but the point is is that i've done every job at the office and including being a dental assistant i was absolutely the worst assistant ever i suctioned a wig oh gosh you did not did you really I did, I did, it, did it come up did it like it came all the way it was oh no i i think that was my last day on oh, that no. two-week journey i don't know why they kept me on so long because i l literally was absolutely the worst assistant and that goes to a point that sometimes you have the right person who has yeah. all the right values and they're just in the wrong job right but i also had no training no experience they just told me to hold this suction and i'm like i can suction <laughs> <laughs> and that you did and, and i did and I, apparently not the best skill for that particular job but find the right people who have the right attitude, who believe in your vision that you share with them. Yeah. And make sure they have the right skills. And if they're not succeeding, so there's an idea. If they're not succeeding because they don't have the right skills, 
or they don't understand. You mentioned this before. I'm going back in our conversation. You said I, two things that were really important, and I want to make sure that we don't gloss over them. I think the important thing is is that it's not. They need to buy into your vision. Oh, for sure. Your vision is like a magnet, right? Like they're they. It, it either attracts the right people, mm-hmm. or it reflects. Uh, no, what's the word? Um, Repels the other. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I forget words sometimes. In the I'm following words. you. I got you. I got your back. Now I know you have a hard stop, and I do too. And I'm gonna have you back because I just enjoy this. Heck, we gotta have coffee sometime. I know I would just have a belly laugh and. Have, have a good time doing that. I want people to know who you, like, where do I find more of you? How do I follow you? Like, where do I go to see more of Dr. Gina Dorfman? It's hard to avoid me. <laughs> Even though you've done it successfully for years. Okay. <laughs> um, advice for new dentist. Um, sometimes, like, there's two ways that we can get paid. One is education and one is money. And sometimes early in the career, Money is not everything. Um, learn as much as you can. Yeah. Learn to do dentistry. I graduated from USC. Fight on. It was funny because I was doing that a lot at the meeting that I was just at. And at some point, Marty Jablo came up to me. And he said, you know, most people don't know what you're doing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm like, wait, no, not everyone went to USC. Not, not everyone knows fight on. I did not know what I was doing. I, uh, I learned dentistry. Okay, here's the thing. Most dentists learn dentistry on YouTube. I graduated five years before YouTube was even a thing. Wow. And eight years before Facebook was a thing. So thank you, Howard Ferran. Literally, I am so grateful to him for everything that he, if I don't know that we would have had the same conversation if it wasn't for Howard Ferran. And I know he's not around a lot lately, but he's really been my inspiration. So advice for new dentist, find a mentor and learn as much as you can because you just don't know what you don't know. Totally. And Howard, um, so I've known Howard for a very long time. Actually, he was, I think he was my third guest. I called him right away. I go, hey, I'm thinking about starting. He's like, I'll help you. I'm on. Let's go. And like, he, I'm like, he, he was on here for like an hour and a half. It's great. So I totally agree. So Gina, I have absolutely enjoyed this. And um, is it okay if I have you back again? Please. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Well, do me a favor. <laughs> now, I just stick around while we say goodbye to everybody else. Uh, I just thank you guys for listening to the Best Practices Show. Hey, if you do me, if you enjoyed today, which I hope you did, please hit the share button, share this with your friends, and keep sending us suggestions for things that you want to see. You're going to see. I'm going to have Gina back. We're going to talk more specifically about her other business she created, which is a fantastic, amazing company, and the why behind it, and what's in the future for that area in your practice. And uh, until we see you guys next time, keep watching the best practices show. You guys enjoy your day. Mm